All right, guys, today we're gonna scan this surfboard on the Einscan HX. Now, I tried a few different scanners, and this one definitely had the fastest, best, easiest results. We're gonna use the laser scan mode today, so you can see we've applied markers all over the surface of the board. And then you can take this and you can reverse engineer the curves, the unique features. There's a lot of different custom boards, vintage boards, all kinds of stuff out there. I've actually been really surprised at how many calls we've got to scan surfboards. So today we're gonna do a demonstration and show you how easy that can be with a 3D scanner like this. Available at visionminer.com, in stock, ready to ship today. There's the regular version and the red bundle, which comes with the Geomagic Essentials, reverse engineering software, more videos on that be sure to check them out if you're interested so first things first i'm going to go into my scanning software and i'm going to do laser scan and i'm going to do a new project group i'm going to call it surf scan 2 and i'm going to do you can do high medium low reverse engineering etc this is a very long flat object so we don't need every single point the distance between the points can be a lot more than a tenth of a millimeter. So I'm actually gonna to go to two millimeter point distance and keep in mind the accuracy is always the same at 0 0.04 millimeters. That's how accurate the points are. Point distances and resolution is how much detail you're getting. I'm gonna leave it on normal mode. I'm gonna do auto exposure and check out my camera window. And then we're just gonna start. So hit the button, hit the preview. I'm gonna do the exposure. Boom, all right, now I'm just gonna start scanning at one end. Picking up data. I'm gonna do an initial pass to capture all this data and just get the outline. Keeping my distance, I'm watching the lights on the back of the scanner to tell me if it's green, it means I'm a good distance. If I get too close, it goes red. If I get too far, it goes blue. So I'm just keeping an eye on that to make sure I'm maintaining distance. Checking back on the monitor every so often. And I'm gonna do another pass just to fill in some of these gaps of data. Now this is realistically already enough data to get the curve of the entire board. But maybe you're making a 3D model for a video game or something like that and you want to do that. Now, this can also be used with full color mode on the HX. So if it was a, if it had a cool decal on it or something custom, then you could also capture that full color model. And then you could actually put it straight into a video game as an STL, OBJ, PLY, P3 point cloud, whatever you want. A lot of data options on this scanner. So now you'll notice on some areas, I have applied more markers on the edge. This is gonna allow me to align with the other side of the board. I'm gonna get all this edge data. And again, with these scanners, the more time you spend, the more points you gather, the better the data overall. So if I was doing, you know, 0.1 millimeters, we'd have to spend a good bit more time, but I'm just gonna get enough to get the results of the shape and the geometry of the part without having to break out calipers or measuring devices of any kind. All right, I'm just gonna hit pause. I'm gonna go look at my data. Looks like I got a good surface. I need to add a little bit more in that center area where that decal actually is. So I'm just gonna spend a little more time and get that from a couple angles. Looks like it did it pretty good, but I could on the fly switch over to black mode and that will get all the data from that. And that'll intensify the light from the lasers. I'm gonna switch back to normal. Then I'm gonna go back down here because I wanna get these uh, I wanna get these fins too. So I'm gonna do the same thing. It's reflective and black. The most challenging surface for a 3D scanner using light projection. And I just switched over to black mode and it's already picking them up like nothing. I don't even have to use the disappearing scanning spray because the HX picks up these kinds of surfaces. I'm, I'm actually, I'm very impressed right now. If you wanna do fin profiles, so maybe you got the fins, that is when you might want to use the higher resolution because it's a much smaller object and you can get the profile of the fins, reverse engineer them, design your own print a spare if you wanted. The servers out there occasionally do damage the fins, so that's something that you could uh, actually make yourself. You get one of our high temp performance 3D printers on visionminer.com, and you could actually print your own. There we go. All right, that should be good. I'm actually gonna go in here and I'm gonna select from right here all the way over there and get rid of the table. I'm just gonna see how that selected it all the way through. Just gonna delete that data and come back here 
and get this data too. Delete. Okay, we got rid of the extra data. Cool, you can already start to see where there's dents in this board. Maybe this is even a quality inspection thing. I'm gonna apply that edit, and then we've got our data. I'm gonna generate the point clouds, and then move on to the other side of the board. So I'm just gonna take this whole thing, flip it right over. Now this will be cool, because you can get the actual texture of the wax. So maybe some famous person was surfing on this board and you want a replica and you can get this in high detail. Let me know in the comments below actually what your ideas with this are. What kind of things would you want? Why would, what would you want the high detail for? Let me know. I always love seeing new things. We've got that data. I'm just going to go to my project group and I'm going to create a new project. And then we're going to align those real quick in the next step. So let me gather the rest of this data. Again, starting at one end. I didn't use auto exposure this time. It's a nice feature. You don't really always need it. Most of the time you don't need it actually. But again, it's a nice feature just to get better data the first time around. So I'm gonna go all the way around the edges. I'm still in black mode. It doesn't necessarily matter. I'm just gonna switch back to normal until we need it because the data integrity will be a little bit higher on the uh, normal mode. When you're using extra bright light, it just does some funny things and the integrity of the actual data goes down because there's more light reflecting. So, you know, that, that actually brings in a good question. Can you scan outside? Should you scan in a dark room? Generally, a darker room is better, but if you're in an office with fluorescent lights, then it, it's perfectly fine. Uh, scanning outside during the day can be very difficult, especially in direct sunlight. It just confuses the scanner. You can still pick up data, you can still get a lot done, but it's a lot harder. So I tell people, even if it's an overcast day, you know, wait until the sun goes down until dusk or after dusk, and then you can scan outside. We've got people scanning industrial equipment and fields. We've got, we have some guys scanning the, the feet for the space shuttle that are actually going into the I believe the LA Convention Center or someplace like that. That was a cool one. But they're scanning the mounts outside. They're like these huge six foot mounts for the space shuttle so that they could recreate several more of those. That was a cool application. Okay, make sure I get my edges so we can align it on this next step here real quick. So this is two millimeter point distance. I'm gonna go in one more time and get rid of this extra data that we don't need. An easier way to do this would be to select the board itself, hit connected domains, and then invert and delete all the extra data. Now we just have the board. Much quicker. A lot of different ways to skin a cat. It's like CAD. You can build a single part in many, many different ways. I'm gonna generate my point clouds, and then we're just gonna go to a line right here on the right. I'm gonna select my first project and my second project. I'm gonna use feature align. You can also use manual where you select points and then it aligns based on those points. You can align based on the markers or you can manually align based on the markers. So let's see what feature align does. This may not work as well. Yeah, that definitely did not work. But we go markers and apply insufficient markers. So it looks like we need to go back a little bit or I just need to pick a few markers and we're gonna select those ones. So let me go in here, the same side, this area. Looks like we've got, let's make sure we're matching up. So we've got one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's see if that works. If not, oh, yeah, there we go. Perfect. We missed a little bit of data in there, but we'll just align it. And if you really wanted to do this, just spend an extra two minutes and get more data. Uh, now we're aligned. Let's go into here, select both projects. And we can see we've got a complete surfboard, even with those fins in there. Now let's mesh the model real quick and we'll go quality high, filter none. Let's look at the raw data. You can do smoothing and other things like that. I generally, it depends what you're doing, right? If you want a 3D model, using the smoothing makes it a little bit nicer. It's very cool. You can get a watertight model, but most of the time in reverse engineering, you want to do unwatertight and no filters because then you get the raw data and you can actually base it off of that. That was quick, all right. And we did a watertight model, which takes even longer most of the time. 
as you can see, we did low resolution, so it's you know you can see some of that wax and everything, uh, but that's a surfboard. All right, so that is how easy and quick it is to scan a huge object like this on both sides, align it for a solid model for whatever your application may be. Now, on that note, we sell a whole range of 3D scanners. So I've got structured light, full color lasers, all kinds of options. So if you're wondering which one should I get for my application, give us a call, shoot us an email. We love helping people figure out which is the right one and I will not sell you a scanner if it's not right for your application. There are some expensive ones and some cheap ones, and if we've got one that fits, we're here to help you find that. Now we also do high temperature performance 3D printing, so if you're into that, let us know. We're always here, check out visionminer.com. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a positive rest of your day. I'll see you on the next video. Should I do a like and subscribe at the end? They they know they know to like the video if yeah, they liked the I video. Think if you don't do it every <laughs> video, it's not gonna like kill you. Yeah, I think we can put this last scene at the very end of the video too. Yeah. So.